Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. And today on September 30th, 2024, we're taking a look at the Lenovo Legion C730 pre-built PC. Before we get into this video, I just want to say that I really like the design of this case. It's pretty cool. Even though there's a lot of metal paneling for air to come through this mesh grill, it's still a good sign for air intake fans. There's no tempered glass panel on the either side, but there is a window on top that's illuminated by LED lights and you can get a clear shot of the graphics card, which looks pretty cool. So to open this thing up, we can pull this lever back here and that should release the side panel. I'll have to put my camera down and use my other hand. There we go. And here we have the Lenovo version of the RTX 2070. And you can see that there's a blower cell fan and it's collecting some air intake from the fan over here, routing up and then out the back of the case. Again, I really like the compact style that Lenovo went for with this case series. The only thing lacking I would say is proper cable management. Everything's just kind of bundled and left in the corner here. But let's power this thing down and get that CPU cooler off and take a closer look. Before we get to that, I just want to point out that I find it really interesting just how many similarities there are between this Lenovo Legion motherboard and the regular run of Le Lenovo ThinkCenter office PCs. Things like the thermal sensor, which is the green input there on the motherboard, and the exact same case fans that you can find in all the Lenovo ThinkCenters. One major difference that I want to congratulate Lenovo on is using a regular USB 3.0 header and having a 24 pin power supply connector. Good job, Lenovo. Oh, and also the 8 pin CPU connector too. That's really great. Also, before we get to that, I'm excited to announce that I'm finally get to test out a Intel Core i9-9900K CPU, which features eight cores and 16 threads and a pretty good boost clock speed. I kind of wish I was testing this CPU on a different motherboard that's capable of undervolting, overclocking, etc. But just testing a kind of out of box experience without any kind of modifications or configurations is still going to be pretty fun. So here's the heatsink and CPU fan taken out of the case. And for comparison, here's another offering by Lenovo in their Think Center lineups. So as far as the Office PC Lenovo Think Center goes, I've seen this exact same CPU cooler all the way from 2nd gen Intel up to 9th gen Intel. The type of heatsink used is totally different. On the Office PC version, it looks more like a heat spreader and it's a little more focused on this one. Being that on this heatsink, the sides are closed off. I assume they wanted air to be directed down completely. And we have three copper heat pipes, which I think will really help with the heat dissipation on the i9-9900K. I'm really curious to see what the temps are going to look like in benchmarks. The same 80 millimeter fan is used on both heat sinks. So there's definitely an interesting balance between how much it costs to develop this heat sink as opposed to what kind of performance you're going to get. And just because I'm also taking this apart for cleaning and putting new thermal paste on, on this version of the RTX 2070, you can see that the heat sink is somewhat similar because the blower style fan is directing air this way so it can be solely ventilated this way out of the case. There's a similar kind of covering on each heat sink. The design of these blower style cards is pretty interesting but I'm expecting it to maybe be a little bit noisier than usual but we'll see what kind of state this is in. I don't think it was heavily used with the previous owner so we might be treated to lower fan noises. And to demonstrate this, I've had MSI Combustor running for just over 30 minutes. The temperatures have been sitting in the mid 80s pretty much the whole time. And the CPU temperatures are looking pretty normal, especially when looking at how much is being used currently. And I'm pleasantly surprised to report that the noise levels are actually really good. I have to admit I was expecting a little bit more noise, especially with the blower style fan. But again, the previous owner didn't really stress this thing out, I think. So the new owner coming next will benefit from that. And with the CPU cooler off, we can get a better look at the RAM. 
In particular, there's two sticks of Samsung DDR4 memory running at 2,666 megahertz each. Just your standard RAM, no fancy heat sinks. And while we're at it, we can get a look at the SSD underneath this black heat sink. Underneath that heat sink, we can see that we have a Samsung PM981A 512GB NVMe solid state drive. This is actually a pretty good SSD for its time running at PCIe 3x4 speeds. I've actually installed the same SSD in various laptops and the performance is actually pretty good. And here's a brief look at the chipset, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. CMOS battery, a little speaker, and I'm curious about what looks like a ribbon cable connection. A quick Google search didn't find me any results, so if anyone can tell me what that is used for, that'd be awesome. So everything's installed back into the PC case, and as I said before, I'm a little bit worried about how well this thing will perform thermal-wise. Attached to the GPU, we have this little plastic piece, and it looks like it might redirect air to the fan on the graphics card because the 80 millimeter air intake fan is right here and maybe some will be ventilated down here towards the CPU fan. Despite those small critiques, I don't actually mind the design of this case. I think it's actually pretty neat. The front IO in the case features two times USB 3.1 Gen 1 and a microphone and headphone jack. The rear IO of the motherboard features another headphone jack, two times USB 2.0 and RJ45 Ethernet port, four times USB 3.1 Gen 1. As for power, we have a light on 500 watt power supply. It's not a bad offering, and it does have the two 8 pin PCIe outs, so you can switch the graphics card as long as it fits within the power range offered by this power supply. But again, as I noted before, that the Lenovo motherboard does have that 24 pin and 8 pin CPU connector. I'm sure you can easily swap in a different power supply if you did upgrade the graphics card. For extra storage, we still have the original 1TB Seagate hard drive installed, and there's room to install a second one if you like. And this PC also has a Realtek 8822VE wireless M.2 card, which also features Bluetooth 4.1. I think I'll let that run for a little bit longer. DaVinci Resolve 19 is open and I have what has become my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage to test with the render. Because we've been talking about cooling so much in this video, I have hardware and monitor loaded up. Let's see how well it performs. Our first render took 2 minutes and 49 seconds to complete, which is actually pretty good. And the reason why I did a second render is because I was kind of surprised about how high the temps got. It looks like our max heat was 96 degrees Celsius, but right now the value is around 76 degrees Celsius, so that's not too bad. I wouldn't say that's a problem unless it stays in that zone for too long, in which case we'd probably get pretty close to a shutdown. So don't get too alarmed if you're seeing a value like this. I'd say that's pretty normal, especially for the type of cooler that's installed. Now onto video encoding with Handbrake. There's 11 minutes and 49 seconds of 1080p gameplay that we're going to encode with the preset of Creator 1080p 60. And again, we're going to monitor the temperatures and see what's up. It's been about 40 seconds, and we can see that the temperature shot up to 96 degrees Celsius, very similar to the DaVinci Resolve rendering test. And again, we're seeing temperatures in the mid-70s range. And again, if you're seeing these values, I don't think there's any cause for concern. Okay, and we're nearing the end here, and we're sitting at 3 minutes and 27 seconds. And before we get to the gameplay footage, I I just want to say yet again that I do really like the design of this case and I wouldn't mind checking out other series but I was kind of lucky to have this thing come into my shop. It's more serendipitous and not intentional. Either way I had a good time testing it out and checking out the innards and also considering the upgrade options. So thanks a lot for watching my video. Let's now check out the gameplay footage. Have a great day.